So guys, in this video, we are going to see some of the basic Docker commands and we are going to see that how we can pull a Docker image from the Docker Hub repository and how we can run that image as a container within my local machine. Now, this video is going to be quite amazing because you are going to see some amazing commands with respect to pull, run Docker, run Docker image as a container and many more things. Now, first of all, just go to the Docker Hub and here you don't have to even log in. You know, you can search many of the public repository that are present inside or public images that are present inside Docker Hub from here. Okay. So first of all, we are going to try with something called as Docker getting started. Now here you can see there is a command. If we probably write this particular command, this image is going to get pulled from the Docker Hub and then it will run as a container within my machine. Okay. Now, first of all, I will go and search for search for getting started. So let's go ahead search for getting started. Now here you can see docker slash getting started. It is a, it is from the docker itself and it has 10 million plus downloads. And obviously to start with dockers, you know, this is a perfect way to start. We can download this image and we can run it within our local machine as a container. So I will go and click on this here. There are some important information that you need to see. Now, as soon as you see this right here on the right hand side, you'll be able to see some pull command. So that basically means if I really want to use this image or pull this image from this Docker Hub repository, I just have to use this specific command. Now, if you go and see with respect to tags, there will be the recent tags that are updated in this specific Docker image. Okay. Right now we'll also be seeing different, different tags uh, with respect to different, different images that are present in Docker Hub uh, repositories. Okay. Now to start with what I will be doing the first step, if I really want to download this image, I have to go ahead and write this particular command that is docker pull docker slash getting started. So let's go ahead and let's do this specific step. So I've opened my command prompt and I will probably write docker minus V to just see that everything is working. I'm actually working on docker version 20.10 and uh, based on the updates and based on the docker desktop that you're installing, this will definitely keep on changing. Okay because the recent updates will keep on getting added in Docker. Now I'll clear the screen. As said, I'm going to download the first image from here. Remember when we download the image, it does not come as a like we container directly as soon as you download it for running that particular image, we have to use a separate command. So first of all, I will go and copy this particular command docker pull docker slash getting started. So once I go over here, once I paste it and once I press enter here, you'll be seeing that the image will get downloaded. So here you can see using default tab tag latest. So uh, if this is not already installed, it will do a um, new pull from the Docker Hub repository and it will download this image. Now here you can see a lot of layers got uh, pulled, you know, from this Docker Hub repository. This is what I'm actually saying. This entire Docker images will be having multiple layers with dependencies from one to other, right? All those layers will get downloaded. These are like smaller images, all the dependency images, right? Now this is perfect. Now, if I really want to see whether the Docker image has got downloaded or not, I'll just go and search for Docker images. So here you can see that obviously I have Boston underscore image, which I created somewhere around two days ago, which we will also see how to create this specific image from our side. When we build an application in this series itself, we'll try to understand. The second one is Docker getting started. This is the image that got downloaded over here. It is somewhere around 28.8 MB. Okay. Now, similarly, if I go to Docker desktop here, you will be able to see images. So here also it keeps the track of all the images that are getting downloaded. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run this particular container. Now in order to run this container here, you can see that we have to run it something like this. Okay. By using this command. Now let's understand what this specific command is. And as soon as I run this particular, uh, image right as a container you'll be able to see that we'll also be able to access it from our uh, local machine itself okay this specific container now first of all uh, let's go ahead and understand the commands in order to run it okay so here you can see it is docker run minus d one parameter using minus p one parameter we are using and this is 80 colon 80 docker getting started so if you see over here mentioned. Now let me explain you each and everything, each and every parameters that is basically used. Once I write Docker run, this is basically used for running the Docker image. If I basically write minus D, this will run the image as a container in a detached mode. 
that basically means independently it will be running okay and we should definitely follow this detach mode uh, because we don't want our command prompt to be in middle of something so that i can keep on continue writing different different commands okay so minus d is nothing but detach mode and then minus p is basically assigning port and mapping port from our local host so local host basically means my, this is my host machine in which windows i am actually working and in this windows machine i am installing uh, a, a container or docker image i am running it as a container right so the container environment will be different my host environment will be different always understand that so here if i write 80 colon 80 this basically means that i am assigning my host port as 80 and from the host port i will communicate with the container port and the container port will be nothing but 80 itself so let me just explain you what exactly we did what is the difference between container port and host port let's say i have downloaded the docker image right so here i have the docker image now as soon as i run this docker image what should happen is that this will create an environment which will be a container environment so let's consider this will be a container environment okay and this container environment is actually running in my host right in my windows machine so my windows machine becomes by host right so here is the container environment that is running right and let's say this application is running over here okay the get list latest application now in order to access this application from my host machine for my host machine let's let it be windows in this case so let's say this is windows okay now when i am basically wants to access this app from my host machine i have to access it through some port okay so let's say this is my local machine like 127.0.0.1 and this will basically be my 80 port let's say i'm using going to use 80 port from my host similarly in order to access this app i also require a port from the container so let's say if i'm assigning it to 80 that basically means this uh, this port is opened from this particular container environment so this mapping is basically done from that specific command so here you can see 80 colon 80 80 basically first 80 basically means the host environment port that is my windows machine and i'm trying to access the container app through this 80 port which is exposed from the container that specific port number is exposed from the container now coming to the next thing is that all i have to do uh, is that go ahead and probably write my docker my image name in short so docker getting started okay now if you really want to check first of all uh whether my image has got downloaded or not okay so you can also go ahead and write docker images so here you can see docker getting started is there now let me just go ahead and run this particular image so i'll write docker run minus d for the detach mode minus p where well i will be assigning my host port uh to the container port so that i will be able to access the application and then i have to go ahead and write my docker slash getting started okay so this is my image name now as soon as i run this this entire image will be uh, a container environment will be created and this application will run inside that so once i execute it so here you will be able to see yes i am able to execute it okay in the detached mode now what i will do i will write docker and i if i really want to see which all uh which all uh you know the application is working or not uh so here i can basically write docker ps not application if i say that whether the to just verify whether the container is working or not i can write docker ps now here you can see my docker is basically running as a container right and uh, what is the port and what is the ip that i can basically use it is 0.0.0 0.0.0 is nothing but it is the local host itself uh and this local host i can definitely access by 127.0.0.1 okay so this is what is my local host so if i go back over here here you can see this is uh, the host port 80 and this is the container port 80 right so what i have to do is over here is that just write colon 80 and just press enter so here you will be able to see this getting started application has now started right so here you will be able to see what all things happened now let's go through this what all getting started is all about this is just to give like how you can basically run a docker image uh, in your local host or in your host machine
Congratulations, you have started the container for this tutorial. Let's explain the first command that you ran. In case you forgot, here is the command. So this is the command we used. Minus D basically means run the container in detach mode in the background. Minus P AT colon AT basically means map map port 80 of the host to the port 80 in the container so we are mapping the host port to the container port so that we can access it from this particular host port and docker getting started is basically the image that we are going to use okay and then you can basically find out all this information and all right and uh, the command that we specifically use to check whether the docker is running or not or whether the container is running or not that is docker ps and obviously i can see that a docker is basically running here you'll be able to see the port information also okay now i will clear the screen okay now let's see if i really want to stop the container then how do i stop it so if i go ahead and write docker ps here you'll be able to see the container that is running if i write docker stop i have to write docker stop and i have to use the container id so i'm just going to paste it over here and press enter so once i do this here you'll be able to see now if i go and type docker ps the docker container has stopped right but if i probably see the docker image so here you'll be able to see the image is there now let me run this docker container once again okay and let's execute this so it is now running over here let me go and see my docker desktop here you'll be seeing in containers also it gets updated the first one we started and we exited that information is also been seen so let's say that if from the past one day whatever docker container whatever images or docker images you have run as a container all that information is also getting updated over here and you can delete that specific information also okay now in this particular case i have just started a container so here you can see that it is running okay and based on that you can definitely uh, just call this as colon 80 and you'll also be able to see this this tutorial is working fine okay now let me go ahead and let me write docker stop okay i'm going to just stop the container id the container id is let's see first of all i'll just go and see docker ps because i really need the container id so this is the container id over here so i will write docker stop this specific container id and press enter okay uh i think i've used one extra space so let me do one thing okay so I've used one extra place. Let me clear the screen now and make sure that you don't even uh, use spaces over there so that it'll not run. So, okay, so it's working absolutely fine. I used one space, so it thought some other commands. So now that specific container is not there, okay? Now, similarly, if I have my Docker images, you'll be able to see Docker is getting started images present. If I want to remove this image, I can also use a command which is called as Docker image remove, okay? and i can use this particular image id okay and paste it over here so here you can see that i'm getting some error error response from daemon conflict unable to delete this because it may have some information see uh, as soon as we stop the container also right and we remove the container it will have some some information that will be linked so this kind of error will come so for in this particular case i will remove it forcefully okay now once you remove it you can see untagged and deleted now see my docker images so here you will be able to see that image has got deleted okay now i will again clear the screen uh, now this is all about this one and here also you can see in my images it will show exited uh, boston image is only there container is uh, only one is there and this has got exited so i'm also going to delete this no need to delete it if you don't want to delete it now let me go back to docker hub and let's try one more image uh, uh, just as an assignment but anyhow i'll do it in front of you so what i will do is that just search for over here as hello world okay so this is a hello world docker uh, image and this is also a docker official image that basically means docker has only uploaded this specific image um, and here you'll be able to see all the steps right all you have to do is that docker pull hello world and docker run hello world so for pulling the base image you just need to write pull right and in order to run, you just write docker run hello world, okay? Now here you'll be able to see that what this entire thing will get generated. This, this, this print message will get generated from this particular image and then it will automatically stop. That is what this hello world will do, okay? So just pause the video and just try it out. And uh, once you have tried it out uh, with respect to the hello world, then continue the series, okay? So 
what I'm actually going to do now, let me go ahead and execute it. So first of all, I'm just going to write Docker. This time I'll not pull, okay? Directly if I run also, and basically write hello world, if this image is not present, right? What it will do, it will pull the image from the Docker Hub repository. So no need to write Docker pull again. You can directly write Docker run hello world. If this image is not present over here, then it is going to pull from the Docker Hub and then it is going to run it. So once I enter it, you can see unable to find the image hello world latest locally. So here you'll be able to see that all the pull will basically happen. And here this is printed completely. To generate this message, Docker took the following steps. Docker client contacted a Docker daemon. The Docker daemon pulled the hello world image from the Docker hub. The Docker hub created a new container from the image which runs the executable. The Docker daemon streamed that output to the Docker client which sent it to your kernel, right? And then now if I probably go and see Docker PS, you will not find any container because it has got exited. You know, it, it displayed this message and it got exited. But if you go and see Docker images, this image will be available, right? So this is hello world, okay? Again, uh, let's open some another Docker uh, image. Let's say Redis. Now see if Redis is there, Redis uh, uh, is an application which we specifically use for the caching purpose. Now over here, in order to run this, if I write Docker pull Redis, and here you have a lot of tags. Okay, a lot of tags with respect to Redis also. So specific tags also you can pull it. Like if you pull, if you write tag, by default it takes the latest tag. That basically means whichever is the latest version that will get downloaded. But suppose if you want this tag like bullseye, you can basically use this. If you want this version of tag of Redis, you can also use this, okay? So different, different version and different, different containers will also run. One more super important point that you really need to know is that we can run any number of containers on the same port. Let's say this is a container for hello world. Okay. Uh, let's say we can also create another container for getting started. Okay. And this can also be assigned to the same port. Let's say my container port is 80 here also. My uh, hello world port is also 80. But my host port should always be different when I'm communicating with this. And similarly, let's say from my local host, I'm communicating with this, right? I should make sure that I should be assigning some different port like 5000 okay this 5000 will be linked to 80 and one more thing guys not 80 colon 80 also we can also try with different different port if you want okay so host port can be uh, uh, configured based on the based on your host environment which port ever whichever is available with respect to that okay so in this video we we learned about docker images pull run you know how to run a specific image by using the run command in the detached mode how to assign port and all right now as we go ahead uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to create our own application we'll create a docker image and we'll also push this into the github uh, docker hub repository not github docker hub repository so that we can search for this now let's say if i'm searching for krishna i have actually posted some of the things uh, probably i have to sign in let me just sign in over here um so I'm just going to sign in over here and here you'll also be seeing that I've also pushed some Docker images so that other people can use. Okay. So if I probably go and click on repository. So this is one ML model I had actually created long back. This is the sentiment analysis here. You can see that how many number of times it has got downloaded. You know, all these things are there. So this is also kind of image, you know, if you really want to, uh, pull or push this, uh, to push this to a new repository, I have to use push command. But if you really want to use this, you can actually use pull command like docker pull Krishna x06 sentiment analysis. And you can use this in your machine and you can build it as a container or you can run it as a container. Okay. So all these things we'll try to see in the upcoming videos where we will create our own Docker image and we'll try to push it into a Docker hub so that any person can download it and run it as a container. So I hope you have understood this particular video and yes, uh, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.